Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Today, there's going to be a pair of wide receivers looking to make big plays on the field. It's Allen's Chargers going up against Beckham's Giants. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thanks. We are across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with the Los Angeles Chargers. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback, a multiple-time pro bowler. It's, of course, Eli Manning. Had another nice season a year ago. His sixth 4,000-yard campaign, but even more importantly, Get his Giants back into the playoffs with an 11-5 mark after three straight losing seasons. They run with a fifth-round man, Paul Perkins. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Paul Perkins, 75 yards. And the Giants are going to take a first quarter lead. The first play from scrimmage. Some of these people haven't even taken their seat. That's what is commonly known as a fast start. That's what my horse racing friends would say. They caught a flyer out of the gate, and guess what? They're in the lead now. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Rosas now to kick this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. As this L.A. Charger offense takes the field, they're probably worried about ball protection. Last week, three interceptions for Mr. Rivers, and it's been a struggle through the first three weeks of the season. It certainly has, and when you go back over the last few years, what's been a struggle for him is knowing who he's going to throw to on a given week. Receivers in and out of the lineup, hard to keep Keenan Allen on the field because he's had various injuries. Of course, Antonio Gates is still there, but he's much more of a third down guy now because Hunter Henry supplanted him as the starter at tight end. But for Phillip Rivers, he always wants to take the big shot, wants to create the big play. Doesn't always work out for him. The first down throw here for Rivers. And they get him down, but not before.
before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try to be aggressive on their first series. Now a play fake here on first down. Olivier Vernon in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. to the 29. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. So here we go, first and 10 now. Uh, here we go. Following the penalty, here's Gordon. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. With that, let's check out how the Chargers line up on offense. In 2016, the Chargers were ranked 14th overall in offense. They're only 26th in rushing, but that's not because they couldn't run the football. In fact, Melvin Gordon ran it pretty well at times. Overall, though, this is a pass-first team led by their quarterback, Phillip Rivers. They finished eighth in the league in throwing the football. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third-and-one situation. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge. And that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. So it'll be first down here after the run. Rivers now to throw on first down. And it's complete to Antonio Gates. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. 
Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now a second down throw for Rivers. Hunter Henry brings it in. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like your shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? First carry for Brandon Oliver. And he lost the football. But a Chargers player was able to fall on it, and they'll keep possession. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. The fumble, but they're able to maintain possession. Now it's second down. Rivers. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Well, free safety blitz, that can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. So it's third and long for the Chargers and Rivers after the sack. From the gun, Rivers finds his target. It's Gates. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Big fullback, Watt, and he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and goal. After a play like that, there should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. now on second down and this is going to be incomplete and we look now at the defense for the Giants George Jenkins was always thought of as a first round talent coming out of college and while he went in the second round he got better and better in his years with the Rams because of his ability to track the football. In fact, when he got his hands on the ball, it often went the other way for touchdowns. And in his first year in 2016 with the Giants, he continued to ascend at the cornerback position, locked down some of the better receivers in the league, and his confidence grew with each and every game. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive, but right now they need five yards on this third down try. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And this will be caught in the end zone for a Chargers touchdown. Tyrell Williams, a five-yard touchdown. And the Chargers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. 
on those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route, ordinarily is probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. the Giants offense back out onto the field and coming off a one play drive that was so deflating for the defense what, what's their mentality how do they rally here and stop this offense well hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done but to allow a run of that length that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. On second down, Perkins. And an alley to run. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. From midfield, here's Manning. Pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Melvin Ingram in there to sack him for a loss of six. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. Manning going to give it to Perkins. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. He lost two there. And it's third down. All right, partner, let's go back over the last couple of plays. Sack, loss of yards on a running play. Not exactly the sequence that an offensive coordinator gets comfortable with when calling plays. And now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. Working from the gun, Manning. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Melvin Ingram in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. 
Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away. Travis Benjamin, deep for the Chargers. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon, and he'll take this one up to about the 23. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Chargers on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. Here it's third and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. So the offense has it first and ten. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Try to throw here. Rivers. It's complete right side to Benjamin. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Rivers to Benjamin. Good for the Charger first down. here in this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. Back to MetLife Stadium in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. 
Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. They've got it second and ten to start things out. And here comes play number six on this drive. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. Wide open receiver complete. Touchdown LA. Tyrell Williams. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Chargers have taken the lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Now the try here for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So this drive spans seven plays. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Chargers, their defense heading back out there. They're just hoping for more of the same last time they forced the punt that led to a score. They flipped the field, essentially. And that's what you want to do as a defense. Make sure that you put your offense in a great position to run their offense and put the ball in the end zone. That's exactly what they accomplished. Well, they accomplished that last time. What will they accomplish this go around? The drive starts with a run by Perkins. And he powers his way up past the 30. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. They go with Perkins again. And he's got some space here. And he's finally taken down, but not before he reaches the 14. It's a big-time play there for the G-Men. 54 yards on the ground. Nothing fancy there. A little smash-mouth football right up the gut on the dive, and it turns into a huge play. You talk about the fastest way to the secondary. Right up the gut, as you described, and sprinted into the secondary for a long, long run. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, 
not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. They'll run again now with Darquan. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Now a first carry here for Shane Green. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Shane Green. 13-yard touchdown run. And the Giants are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle, no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Rosas now to add the PAT. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. Five plays there on that drive. And it's capped off by a 13-yard touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Open now to get back in the end zone on his fourth possession. on first down. Caught by Gates, left side. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Second down, Rivers. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He was looking for Antonio Gates that time. And it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Chargers on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is third and eight. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And nowhere to get away. Rivers is dropped. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play.
On to punt, Drew Kayser, second-year man from Texas A&M. Back deep is Dwayne Harris here. <laughs> He's still on his feet. A 45-yard punt, four there on the return. And it'll be giant football first and ten. And New York set to take the field. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Manning. Throw left side complete to Ingram. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. on the give from Manning. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Shepard, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Now, this trio that New York has compiled, Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and, of course, Odell Beckham Jr., fits right into head coach Ben McAdoo's attack. They led the league in three wide receiver sets in 2016. on first down and he'll be knocked down sideways at the 28 it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down tough running there that's a hard earned four yards yeah those are the unsung kind of runs they don't fill up the stat sheet but they do set you up in good position on second down Second down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And some room to maneuver. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground at the 13 yard line. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Sometimes we get hung up on the stature of a player. Paul Perk is just 5'10. But you get him in space, throw the ball to him, he can create some plays downfield. Just a second-year guy was taken in the fifth round. Does he have a bright future in this league, Charles? I think so. He's one of those guys I watched in college and thought definitely had a future in the NFL. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. 
But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Manning looking to throw on third and two. That's hauled in by Marshall for a giant touchdown. Brandon Marshall, a five-yard touchdown. And the Giants have broken our tie as they take the lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Roses to add the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. So out come the Chargers. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Tenth carry for Melvin Gordon. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him two yards that time, and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Play fake, Rivers. Going deep for Benjamin. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Here's Drew Kayser now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Ah. 
His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. They'll let Perkins carry to start the drive. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Manning to throw on second down. It's hauled in by Shepard. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I'm pretty sure the Giants saw big success for Sterling Shepard coming out of Oklahoma. They could see him in their offense working in the middle of the field and making big catches. Second only to Michael Thomas last year among rookies in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. A reminder with halftime approaching, when we get there, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. And I hope he's iced down his throat because he's got a lot to get through <laughs> because we've had no shortage of points scored in the first half. It has been a fun track meet. and 10. Here's Manning. Throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And that'll bring up second down. Okay, let's get a shout out real quick in here while we got a second. Jake Elliott, rookie, Memphis. 61-yard field goal to lift the Eagles to victory. Man, that was impressive. How about that? Only his second game with the Eagles. He had been drafted by Cincinnati and was actually on their practice squad. Caleb Sturgis gets hurt for the Eagles. They take Elliott off the practice squad late in the week of right before uh, week two, the week two game at Kansas City. He shows up, and I asked the special teams coach, I said, well, what do you tell him? What do you talk to him? He said, I don't do anything. I just stay out of the way, <laughs> let him kick and ascertain from there. Looks like that strategy paid off really well for the Eagles with that 61-yard game winner in week three. Meanwhile, all the Giants fans just turned off their gaming systems. <laughs> On play action, now Manning. And Ingram holds it in. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Giants add on to their lead. 
And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here in the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Rosas now to add the PAT. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Rosas now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Phillip Rivers now gears up to take the offense back out there. A lot of the problems have been on the other side of the ball. Is that frustrating for a quarterback who's been playing well? It is, but there's no way that the best ones let their teammates know that. They actually take it upon themselves and say, okay, I have to do even more, or I need to play better. Maybe even say, I put my defense in a bad spot. That's what true leadership shows you. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to change much personally. On first and ten, Rivers. Benjamin's got it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. here on first down over the middle and it's caught Keenan Allen and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two Back here, I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. And now a first down following that long gain. A first down throw here for Rivers. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it's a second down. To the air again here, Rivers. Benjamin with it over the middle. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35-yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Go, go. 
So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. Oh, looting the tackle. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Giants are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Chargers won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. First and 10 on the carry. There goes the scat pack, all Perkins. And nobody can stop them as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Rivers has got the completion here, and it leads to a touchdown. Chargers tied up at 7. Now, early in the second quarter, Williams is wide open, able to make the grab. And he caps off the six-play drive with the score. The Chargers up now by 7. Giants now on third and eight. Vereen's going to stay between the tackles, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. Giants tied up at 14. Giants on offense midway through the second. Marshall's wide open, able to make the grab. This goes for a touchdown. The Giants up by a touchdown. Now first and 10. Shepard's by himself here, and he counts off the six-play drive with the score. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to East Rutherford for the start of the second half. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Brandon Oliver now on the return. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. 
a lot of them script to start the second half too and they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game we'll see if that script is a good one for them. now a play fake here on first down try to lay one up deep and a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. No gain on that run. And while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. The Chargers on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. From the gun, Rivers. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Charger first. now to throw on first down completes it to Benjamin and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40 12 more yards there and another first down Offense lining up first and ten. On play action, Rivers. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. That one good for 10 yards. And that's going to bring up a third down. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them, and now instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. On third down, Rivers. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. 
Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we've got, yeah. we got, de we got, the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Well, they tried the field goal from just inside of 70 yards. It missed, and now this offense set up nicely at midfield. From midfield, here's Manning. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. But that's the Kickstarter right there. Eli Manning finding his guy, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, it's a deadly combination, isn't it? It really is, but what really makes it work is just how unflappable Eli is with his demeanor, able to maintain his calm and his poise, because we know OBJ, he can run pretty hot and get excited out there. Sometimes just one-handed grabs for him. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> just throw it up there. He'll go get it. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. He's going to go for a big play downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. And on second and ten now. to throw again. Manning under pressure and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. Third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. Here's Manning to throw. To Vereen out in the flat. It's a gain of six on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. The punter wing is on as he sends this one away. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. 
The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. To throw is Rivers. Caught by Gates, left side. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've had good success. Five for eight to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now Gordon. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Rivers sets up the screen to Gordon. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Second down and four. Now Rivers. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Delvin Tomlinson never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks. And the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. So it's third and long for the Chargers and Rivers after the sack. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Here's Drew Kayser now as he's on to punt for L.A. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. Now, this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's a pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. We see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows his offensive line's gonna give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first down, back to Perkins. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Now a play fake. Manning. Looking sideline incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Manning to throw on third and one. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can't he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defense will give him. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Darquan. And he'll be taken down right around the 41 yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes, and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Now Perkins, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it third down. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, and sometimes that just happens. It is the NFL. They will make some plays against you. The Giants on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Manning. And Ingram holds it in. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. 
three yards to go here on second down. On play action, it's Manning. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four. The Giants on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This time it's third and three. To throw, it's Manning. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. And it's first and goal now, but still 10 yards to go. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. A good red zone run there, nine yards, and it'll be second and goal. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And this seemingly endless drive continues. They'll let the shorter back Perkins run it. And he is in. Touchdown, Giants. Paul Perkins, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And finishing it off with a touchdown run, Paul Perkins. Rosas now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. complete no gain and it's second down 
Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Here's Rivers. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped the pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm was confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. The Chargers on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and 10. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Staying on his feet. It's complete right side to Benjamin. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is incomplete. The fourth down play doesn't work for the Chargers. And the Giants are going to take over in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They'll run it now out of the gun. Down to the 25. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run. Not the one that's going to break for big yardage. But he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount. And he got it done. Nursing that slim lead. You're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, they go to Perkins. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. He finds Beckham complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, that catch just gives us another reason to praise Odell Beckham Jr. Off to an incredible start to his NFL career. Three Pro Bowls, three straight Pro Bowls, obviously, and first giant to do that in more than 50 years, Charles. And how about the numbers that he's put up also? 1,300 or more yards and 10 or more touchdowns in each of those three seasons. Red zone opportunity. First and goal, Perkins. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Hey, 
Manning to throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. This offense so far on third down, they've been tough to stop. Eight for ten so far. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the gun, it's Manning. And he's got his man. Beckham. Touchdown, Giants. Odell Beckham from three yards out. And the Giants add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is it bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? And they open the lead up now to 25 points. That time, a six-play drive, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. First down, Rivers. Trying to force it to Allen, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And New York set to take the field. Now, these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say I'd let's be aggressive and go after him. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. So after the INT, it's Manning. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. Holding offense. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line call that a loss of five yards on the play and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long on this day the ground has been his but at least on that individual play we just saw the defense finally with a win yeah they finally got one and that's a win for them but all game long he's seen the holes and they've been huge for him 
Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. They'll run here with Vereen. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. They'll get six there on the run, but it brings up fourth down. But once again, a good example of situational football. That was third and very long, so you know they were guarding against the pass. And when they decided to run the ball, that was okay. Whatever yardage they picked up, as long as they didn't get to the first down marker, the defense was willing to concede, and they stopped them well short of a first down. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker Aldrich Rosas for the field goal try. This one from 46 yards out. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And their lead will swell up to 28. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Phillip Rivers now gears up to lead the offense on the field. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But... Let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And the Giants ready to come out now. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Watch left, watch left, watch left. He's right there. Right there. Right there. On second down, here's Manning. His throw incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, and that takes us from second to third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. Yeah, it came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. An extra defensive back on the field for the Chargers now on third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, 
you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Manning now on first down. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Manning to throw on second down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll be third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Roses, for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And the kick by Roses is good. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. Field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And last time, was it pretty? One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. It's caught on the right side. Williams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a charger first. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. A first down throw here for Rivers. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. So this is what happens when you throw interceptions, that confident veneer that you have. 
has chipped away a little bit. Maybe a little bit gun shy throwing it around. Yeah, under throwing him there, and you're right. Those interceptions may be in the back of his mind. Throwing again. Rivers on second and ten. Right back for Allen. This time he finds him complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The Charger first down. Rivers hooking up with Allen. So here we go, first and ten now. Rivers now to throw on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Damon Harrison in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Second down, Rivers. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Antonio Gates, the veteran tight end, was the intended receiver, and it's third down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Third and long for Rivers. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Dalvin Tomlinson in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. Here's Drew Kayser now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And New York set to take the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels, because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home, all right? And sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll take this one up to about the 23. 
They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it? Or skeptical. You trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because you know, open air boot. That rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Giants are winners as we say so long from MetLife Stadium.